Today was a pretty monumental day in the 2024 GOP primary. Donald Trump saw another group of polls showing that he's not just winning nationally among Republican voters, but continues to dominate the first three states of the cycle. Ron DeSantis, who still likely is top challenger, had a day to forget. His standing in the RCP average is tied to its lowest point since he entered the race. And then came the announcement this afternoon that his campaign was cutting a third of their staff, trying to reset things there. That's not to say he should be ruled out. John McCain, remember, famously fired twice as many staffers as DeSantis did today, and he still went on to win the nomination. But, of course, he didn't win the presidency. Though the candidate shopping has begun in earnest, I think, and Senator Tim Scott has seen a small bump in support, but the biggest surge may be that of my next guest. Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy now finds himself firmly in third place and is closing the gap on DeSantis. He joins me now. Vivek, so good to see you. What do you make of the current state of the race? See, you've, you've been very complimentary of President Trump, uh, and you kind of you, you have the same policies generally as President Trump. Has that led to your success now pulling in number three. I think part of what's leading my success, Laura, is that I'm not running against any of our candidates. I am running for this country. And I think part of our mistake as Republicans is that we have been involved in litigating the grievances of the past, focused on issues that actually aren't at the top of the mind of Americans. I'm focused on actually reviving our missing national identity. And we've had most of our success, Laura, in this campaign when I've gotten into specific solutions an actual economic vision for this country. That is the top issue on voters' minds, an actual clear vision of how we will shut down the administrative state, not just a slogan about the deep state, but offering exact detail on how we will do it. And the one thing I've discovered, Laura, is I'm not following the advice of my political advisors and consultants who tell me to dumb it down and keep it simple. I love Our it. Republican primary voter base is in their their smart base. And I think if we respect that voter base, what I'm learning is they're respecting me back. And that's what's driving uh, uh, our rise. I, that is music to my ears because I would like fire all the consultants. OK, they're usually wrong and they get paid a huge amount of money to do precisely nothing. OK, so fire most of the consultants. They're just generally worthless. Um, commentator Dave Rubin is a DeSantis supporter. I'm, I'm told he spoke about your campaign yesterday. Watch this. It's fairly obvious to anyone paying attention that that Trump and Vivek are coordinating, right? Vivek is doing all endless attacks on DeSantis, no attacks on Trump, and all of the Trump surrogates online, you know who they are, they're always pumping up Vivek because Vivek's going after DeSantis. So, Vivek, is that your role here? I mean, he seems to have it all figured out. Well, look, I think a commentator's job is to be a commentator from the side. But the fact is, I'm not attacking DeSantis. I do believe in drawing policy contrasts. That's good for the Republican voters. I am running to win this election. And at this point, Laura, I am confident I will be our next president. And for my case, this isn't about November 2024 as the destination. The destination I think about is January of 2033. What do I want to tell the people of this country that we actually accomplished? One of the great farewell speeches of all time was Ronald Reagan's in January of 1989, when he said that we had revived a national character that we were missing. That's what I want to tell Americans in January of 2033. We're going to do that by reviving the economy, declaring independence from China. And I think what's driving our rise, Laura, and I think that it's OK, that it's making some of the others yeah. insecure. That's going to level our party up. And that's a good thing. The is bank, really specificity of where we are going. I think I think that's that that's right. I think people are looking for specific solutions really quickly, though. Um, what are you going to do or what do you see in terms of getting the early ballots in people's hands, voting early to get those ba votes banked and then ballot harvesting where it's legal? I mean, there are a lot of Republicans like, oh, we can't do that. It's all cheating. But OK, the other side's doing it. How do you get to 270 really quickly? The maximally lawful way of competing, we have to compete. There's an old saying on the court from John Newcomb in tennis. Either you win the match or you leave blood on the court. We're not going to leave blood. We're going to win. And that's exactly how we have to compete to win this election because the stakes are too high, Laura. And I also think we need a landslide. This cannot yep. be 50.1. This needs to be Reagan 1980-style revolution. I'm planning for the Ramaswamy revolution in 2024. All right, Vivek, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much.
Now, we just got some breaking news ahead on the Hunter Biden case. This is just crossing.